Hi, so welcome to chapter eight. <laughs> this is when we're going to start. This is like the start of the beginning of the end. <laughs> so chapter eight is the beginning of statistics. And then chapter nine is when we actually describe our data. And then chapter um, 10 is probability. So chapters eight and nine go to go together and then chapter 10, which is probability, um, is kind of its own topic like usual. But then when we get to chapter 11, we only have a few sections in chapter 11, but it brings all of it together from chapters eight and nine and chapter 10 together to have this new concept in chapter 11. So this is kind of like the beginning of the end for our class. So chapter eight is so low key, like it's just about vocabulary and definitions and concepts for everything for chapter nine. So we're just going to discuss how we collect data in chapter eight. And this is going to be really important because we tend to really just look at marketing as marketing and just look at, you know, ads like ads and okay, you know, um, four out of five dentists recommend dentine. Okay, I believe it. You know, do you believe it? Like five dentists, like how many, what dentists were they? Were they even in the United States? Like, were they all dentists all over the world? You know, like, so um, another famous campaign I wrote in here was like AT&T has the dro dr lowest dropped calls. And you may have heard of that campaign if like you're old enough, um, but you might have been really young. But there was this huge campaign that AT&T was trying to compete with other um, cell phone services. And it's like the lowest drop calls. And in fact, there were some inv inv um, invalid statements from the study and research itself after it was scrutinized, and they actually had to pull that campaign. And so they had to take down all those billboards and all those commercials and like revamp it. And that's because sometimes when data is given to you, it's sometimes put in a way that's actually inaccurate and trying to twist it so they can market it. Like AT&T lowest drop calls, like I've had AT&T since I was like 16 and they didn't ask me for that survey. I'm like, did they ask everyone from all the way from the South Pole to the North, North Pole to the Eastern Western Hemisphere? Like did they ask every single person with a cell phone of AT&T and ask how many lowest drop calls? I highly doubt they did. And so this is why we're going to talk about a population and a sample because it's highly unlikely that you get a population, meaning 100% of everybody using AT&T all over the world, all the way from those like deep, small, tiny towns to the big towns like New York. Like they did not survey everybody. They took a sample, right? They took a little bit, a subset. So, um, in this first section, we're just going to talk about stats and kind of talk about how we take samples and, and populations and the target, like who are we? So we do AT&T lowest drop calls. Who are we intending this ad for? Because people who don't, like paying for a cell phone is like cheap, cheap chicken, right? Like it doesn't even matter. It, they're not going to care about those ads and marketing. So who are you trying to target when you market? Four out of five dentists recommend dentine. Are you trying to market gum chewers or certain age groups, right? So um, if we just get started, I think the first thing we should probably do is like define statistics. So if we define statistics, it's just the process, right, of collecting, organizing, summary, summarizing, and analyzing information. And what we do with statistics is draw intelligent conclusions. We no longer are robots to everything. We're like, okay, um, I'll have dentine because four out of dentists recommend it, you know. I'll go with AT&T because it said it had the lowest drop calls on that billboard, right? So we're now we're going to make intelligent decisions based on statistics. So how do we do that? Well, we got to use data. So data is um, the actual pieces of information and observations we use to draw conclusions. So um, the first thing we want to talk about is characterizing a population. So a population is the entire set. And you can think of the census, the US census that we heard so much about this year is 
Every single person household has to fill out a census. That's a population. A sample would be a subset of each city doing a sample, uh, a subset of the cities that would do the census. But a census, the US census is a population. We wanna try to get every single household possible. So when, it's kind of unreasonable. Like let's take the AT&T lowest drop calls. It's unreasonable to try to take this population because you're not gonna get everybody all over the world that has a cell phone and ask how many lowest drop calls because you can't just get AT&T, right? You need something to compare it to. So you're gonna need all those other cell phone services people. So who's gonna pay someone to travel all over the world, every single town, every person, everywhere you go, and survey it. It's just it's not going to happen. It's just financially unreasonable and time consuming, well, especially by the time the the survey and research is put together. It's we're like in 8K um, HD, you know, so it's just so it takes too much time. So what we need to grab is what we call a sample. And there are ways to take a sample. We don't take a sample just all in the United States for AT&T. We can take a sample in which um, provides a good information about people using cell phone services in the world. We take a little from Africa, we take a little bit from the US, we take a little bit from Alaska or Canada or China, just take a few people to send surveys to from each and get a really good representative of AT&T users or cell phone users in general. So there's an example up here that says, if a, we want to study the amount of money spent on textbooks by a typical first year college student, our population might be all first year students at a particular college. So here's the entire population of students at a college. Well, if you're at UCLA, that population is way too large and way too time consuming and would cost a lot just to sit there at the bookstore and survey how much you spent, how much you spent, how much you spent. But it would be timely if we could take a sample of those. And maybe those are different days, different times, different student ages, or anything you could do. So um, we want to take the population, that's ideal, but we can always collect a good sample to represent the population. Now we just don't want all populations. For example, if we were doing this one where we were doing first year college students, we wouldn't take first year college students all over the world, every single college, community college, university, a technical college, private college, we, we wouldn't do that. All of, that would be too, too time consuming and too expensive, right? So what do we do? Well, I'm, I'm just at SEC, so I'm just interested in SEC students. Okay, then your population is the SEC students, first year college student, and then your sample could be a subset of those. So we have a target population. Your population of first year college students is the whole entire world of first year, right, college students. But if you are only interested in your local population, which is SCC, Santiago Canyon College, then we call that a target population. So you can still use a population and take a sample of a target population. That's fine. And we actually want that. That's actually good statistics and a good representation because if you're taking students out of your community let's say you're taking new york first year freshmen and we how would we use new york students who live in a total different environment than us over here in orange california right and so we want to be able to use target populations when possible so for example, a dentist professor really wants to see if four out of five dentists prefer dentine gum over any other gum at his dental school. What would, the popu what would be the population? So again, the population is everything, right? All, and all over the world, right? And so it's just a lot. So we would say, if you were a dentist professor, so you're, he, this person may not be a dentist, practicing dentist, but actually is teaching students to be dentists. Um, what would he, where would he go to ask those questions, right? So he would be, um, the population would be all dentists, not everywhere, right? Not all over the world, every single dentist, every single town, right? It would just be in that school, right? So all dentists at the dental school that he works at or she works at.
at the dental, sorry, dental school. Okay. So let's talk about the pieces of information we get from our data. So a parameter is a calculated value from the population. And how you can always remember is P with P. P for parameter, P for population. But again, we, again we, we can have a target population, but we don't usually sample every single object, uh, subject in the population. It's too timely and too costly. So when we take a survey of the entire population, we call that the census. And you can think about the US census in that case. But of course, we can always find a smaller subset of a target population or the census that rep fairly represents the population, and we call this a sample. And the values we get from the sample is called a statistic. So S with S, sample, S for sample, S for statistics, P for parameter, P for population. So let's go ahead and determine the average length of the trout in a lake where researchers catch 20 fish and measure them. What is the sample and population in this study? So again, we're at a particular lake. Researchers go on a boat and they go particular lake. So there's this lake full of fish. But of all the entire lake fish, they only catch 20 to measure. So what would be the population? So the population, right, is all trout in the lake. But the sample is what, right? The, so you're in a boat, there's the whole lake, but you're only catching 20. So the sample has to be the 20 fish. So the sample is, um, the 20 fish they caught. So always think of like the population as everything, all, take all, and then the sample is just like a small subset. So a college reports that an average age of its students is 28 years old. Is this a statistic or parameter? So it, again, a statistic would be from a sample, right, S with S. A parameter would be P with population. So a statistic would mean that I would have gotten this from a sample. A parameter means I would have gotten this from the population. Now, um, one little hint is if they tell you that they took a sample, then we automatically know that it was a statistic. But the fact that they're saying that the average student at our college, so the average student at Santiago Canyon College, out of all our students here, is 28 years old. So this is actually a parameter. So this is a parameter since it is a measurement that represents the population. of students at the college. And um, they could easily retrieve this information from your application. So uh, we could easily see the average age of SCC students by taking your applications and just taking the pieces of data. So we have the age, um, your maybe your birth date, wh what city you live in, right? We could we could find some information just from your application, which is in a database with all students from the college. Again, if it told us that the college took a sample and found this, then we know that this would have been a statistic. But we assume when it doesn't, it just says in general, our average age at, this, at our school is 28, then we assume it's a parameter.